He doesn't know what to do with it. Oh, he's almost! There was a big fight in the yeah. background. There was a really big yeah, fight. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> no, he's modifying something that for sure is illegal. Something. <laughs> 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 This week, we're back in Spain for the 11th round of the MotoGP Championship for the first of two back-to-back -back races in Aragon. We're here in Zaragoza, and before we head out to Aragon for the Grand Prix, we thought we would meet up with Carlos Tatay to have him walk us through his pre-race workout routine. Hi, Carlos. Hi. How's it going? Good. Would you put me to the test yeah. and, and walk me through your routine? Yes, of course. Okay, let's let's go ahead to the gym. Let's go. <laughs> so, Carlos, what is it that you're going to make me do today? Okay, so we are going to, to do one of my trainings. Uh, first of all, some warm-up, uh, later some strength, and also a bit of cardio, and at the end some mobility, also some type of yoga. Okay, cool, that's good. Yes, okay, okay. let's go. Car a lot when you're on the bike. Yes, without knowing it, you are using a lot of core. You make it look so easy. <laughs> Try. <laughs> That's gonna be challenging, huh? Okay, so, so now the strength and mobility part of the session. For us, uh, it's really, really important because having a good base, we like or not, we crash. So we need to be, our body needs to be ready to be to have a good mobility in every movement we do. Okay, so we will start with an activation. Okay, okay so 90 degrees. 90 degrees. You take here. Yeah. And you go up. How is this first rookie season as a Moto3 rider been yes. since you won the Rookies Cup last year? It's been quite difficult season for me. After COVID, uh, also it's uh, my rookie year, first time in the World Championship. Lots of changes of mechanics, engineer. I wasn't feeling good uh, inside the box, not because of anyone. It's just because of a lot of changes. My first year, yeah. not experience. So I was seeing myself in the back positions and this thing uh, for a rider you, you don't like. Yeah. But yeah, now it seems normal. Let's see if everything uh, goes like this and we can continue improving. But seeing the way you train, you know, yeah, you I got train it. really hard to, to try to be at the top. This one, you need to have a little bit of balance. Okay, like this, exactly. Quite good. Ah, you've done it before. <laughs> you want me to try that? Like this. Yeah, Yee. nearly. So thank you so much for you know walking me through your routine, and uh, I'll see you at the track. Yes, in perfect. Motoran. Cool. Thank you very much, Vanessa. See you soon, see you. Carlos. Bye. Bye. Congratulations on your win in Le Mans. That was really, really impressive. Take your hat off, take a bow. Danilo Petrucci has won the French Grand Prix. How do you handle like the pressure of leading the race for so long? Yeah, I, I immediately wanted to go in front mm -hmm. or understand the situation better and not uh, stay in the mess. You you never know when uh, which is the limit on the on the wet. If someone is passing you, maybe try to catch him immediately. Uh, I was so strong on braking, so it was difficult for everyone to pass me. Fortunately, uh, we had some some fans and uh, we got the uh, mega screen, so yeah. I could watch all the race and understand uh, which which was. So the you rider. were happy that there were fans in the stands because yeah, you exactly. got the big screens exactly. back. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. With no grandstand, with no fans, with no one on the track, in some moments of the race, I was like riding alone. 
I was riding alone in Le Mans, but uh, in fact, in reality, behind me, I got... There was a, a big fight in the back, yeah. huh? There was a really big fight. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and uh, I was, uh, I was uh, so calm and quiet, but uh, I knew that a lot of people were c was catching me. So, Danilo, there seems to be like a universal MotoGP sign language between you riders and your crew chiefs and your technical crew? Yeah, yes. So we, when you, we see you guys during the sessions coming into the pit box and explaining how the bike feels or how it behaves, you tend to use your hands. Usually well, the, the hands is the bike. Sliding and pumping, you like round, 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 round. Like this, you know? <laughs> like this. Pumping. pumping. <laughs> like this. I don't make like a... Uh, you know, Spanish style or Italian style, like ugly style. I don't <laughs> so know. that's Italian and Spanish yes, style. I feel. <laughs> See, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> it is always pretty noisy in the paddock. I take it he's modifying something that is going to be key for the weekend. No, he's modifying something that for sure is illegal. <laughs> yes. Don't tell anyone. Don't go we telling anyone. We make sure there are, there are no cameras around. <laughs> Imagine if there's like a bit of chattering, how would you do it with your hands? Do do like this. <laughs> this is chattering. <laughs> Close to losing the front, we do this. Like that. Close the front. Yeah, it's it's like that. Losing the front is like this. Yes, I definitely <laughs> know how this feels. <laughs> the bike is unstable to when I <laughs> when I do like this, or if the bike is shaking too much, we do like this. So it's like a baby crying. <laughs> so it is like that. <laughs> Time like this, sliding. Sliding? Can't like this. Sliding is this. <laughs> Lose the grip, yeah. it's like whop. <laughs> and then there's the famous high side. They go. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, similar, like whop, and then. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> after that, I, I don't remember. <laughs> all, all the um, geometric, movements of the bike yeah. we say with the with the right hand hands so yeah we we make like this yeah. and then you, you say the, the, the whole body uh, that means that the rear is up yeah. and this means that the rear is shaking when it's on the <laughs> a so <laughs> it almost looks like a TikTok dance yeah it's like uh. <laughs> but the, there is a, always a movement for everything. People you know, it's the first time I talk to someone too, who, who are the movements are. Really? <laughs> it's quite weird. Actually, now I'm doing it and I say, uh, it's so stupid. Sign language is like the universal language for everyone? Yeah, yeah. when I, I come to, to here to KTM, um, my biggest priority was to, to have a crew chief that talks my language because it's super important to explain really good what's going on. But you didn't get one that speaks no. all the time. He's <laughs> from New Zealand. He's from New Zealand. So having this hind language really helps. Yes, yes, it's it's super <laughs> important, especially at the beginning. Now I sometimes I don't need even to make any movement. You know, talking and with the expressions we can understand each other. But if not, movements are really important. Well, perfect. Thank you so much for that You're sign welcome. language lesson for the MotoGP. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Paul. That's good. Thank you. I'm here at the track between turn 9 and 10 where the long lap penalty will take place during the race weekend. And since there's been quite a few long lap penalties given to riders this season, we thought we'd take a closer look at what they are. So the riders would enter here and exit here. And in order to find out more about the long lap penalty, let's head to race direction to speak to the FIM MotoGP Steward Panel Chairman, Freddie Spencer. You have the difficult task of implementing those penalties. When do you give those out? They, they can be used for many different things. For example, um, it is one of the um, penalties for a jump start. In the race, instead of doing a ride through, uh, ride through which was what the penalty was for, for quite a long time, which is basically race ending, yes. uh, it's, it's a too long lap penalty, but it also can allow a rider to have an opportunity to to have a better chance of at least finishing a better result in the race. How much additional time will that long lap give that rider in that one lap? You know, we'd like it to be anywhere from three to four seconds. Okay. If a rider is not able to do the long lap, 
then it's calculated out as a three second penalty. Well, thank you so much for giving us all of this insight My on pleasure. the long lap penalty and the job that you do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now let's go ahead and meet with the man that has performed the perfect long lap penalty so far. So, Joan, everyone says that you have completed the perfect long lap penalty. It was, yeah. <laughs> has he done it? Well, it's close, isn't it? He was almost having his knee down. The, the circuit was filthy. So what was going on in your mind? First of all, when I got the um, the, the information on my dashboard, uh, I didn't try to think when I can do it. I say, I want to do it right now like this. I don't lose the, the focus, you know? And um, that's why as soon as I got the information, I did it. This is the thing that helped me to do it pretty well because it was really clear in the mind. Do it now and it's down. I mean, look at this oh, part, can. right? Yeah, so basically, nice. your body is on the inside of the white line, but the bike is completely on the outside. Uh -huh. So it's perfectly executed. But I was telling that I'm going a lot uh, with motorbike on, on the road. So on the roundabout, you always have to be precise because there's not a lot of grip in the city. Yeah. And clearly, along the line, you can do a lot of things. So Are, are you it, saying you do this on the road? <laughs> <laughs> with the lines? Uh, no, with the knee on the floor, but <laughs> precise with the wheels, yes. Did you expect to finish that long lap and still be ahead of the riders that you that you have behind no, you? No, really, when I came in, it was kind of long. That's why the name is a long lap. <laughs> and I was waiting, ready to count how many guys is passing me. And then I said, no one, no one, no one. And just see Fabio. From that moment, I say, OK, it's like it gave me like a second breath to to give another push and, uh, and save the podium. Do you think you could repeat again a perfect long lap in the penal penalty in the future if you needed to? I, I just hope I will manage <laughs> to don't have a long lap penalty because I was lucky too also that here in Czech Republic, the long lap was in a great place. Well, thank you so much for walking us through your long lap, perfect long lap penalty and best of luck for the weekend. Thank you. See you. intense and action-packed first races for Moto3 and Moto2 in Aragon this weekend. And let's start with Moto3. In Moto3, we had an amazing comeback from Jaume Mazia, starting in from 17th and finishing as the race winner. Darren Binder gets back-to-back -back podiums in second place, and Raul Fernandez achieving his first ever Moto3 podium finish in third today. In Moto2, turn two seemed to be crucial because it took out two of the possible race leaders. It was ultimately Sam Lowe's who was able to take his back-to-back wins. There was an intense battle for second between Jorge Martin and Enea Bastianini, but it was ultimately Enea Bastianini who crossed the line in second place, completing an amazing comeback from 12th to second, and now leading the Moto2 World Championship. Jorge Martin crossed the finish line in third position. The MotoGP riders are now on the grid, so let's see what happens in the race. Five races to go, and the next one starts now. Good stuff from Alex Rins there, then he moves up into third look Whoa, at that just through hot marquez just picks up miller and there's more with that a little Mia. bit wide the pair of them are out wide two, two for the price of one They're for both napping. he's getting worse for him alex marquez dive bombs him got right onto the rear try of the suzuki man the inside here he goes true he goes like a hot yeah. knife through butter it's coming he now he doesn't know what to do with oh, oh he's almost down a major warning can alex marquez get close enough a standing victory for alex rins here in aragon Yet again, another unpredictable race for the MotoGP class. Everything led to believe that it could have been a Yamaha Loka podium in Aragon, but it was in the end two Suzukis and a Honda that finished on the podium. The Suzukis have once again proven that they have that perfect edge grip and they are able to maintain that tire performance all throughout the race, even though John Mir did say that he struggled in the last couple of laps. And that might be due to his tire choice on the front tire. He, he did have that soft tire in the front and soft on the rear. And Alex Marquez had that on him. He had chosen the medium front and the soft rear, and that might have given him a little edge. And with him in second place and John Mead in third, now it is John Mead who leads the MotoGP Championship. Congratulations yet again for this podium finish. Thank you very much. No so, one can say that it was only due to wet conditions yeah, in Le Mans, because yeah, now he has the second place yeah. in dry conditions. Yeah, this is the reality now. <laughs> <laughs> in wet always they say, okay, yeah, in wet, maybe, maybe, but now, now in dry, 
and uh, same condition than Andy Roddy, uh, he did a fantastic race. He, he was really good. close to that yeah, first yeah. win. What do you yeah. think was missing? Because he started very, very, very far, then he need to push a little bit in the beginning, and then when he arrived, when, when he want to push, he has a uh, one uh, warning in the last yes. last corner. Massive warning. And then, then I think he lose a little bit too much to make it just one lap. Remaining two laps or three, I think he can arrive. But anyway, we need to think that we get the podium and the P2 for us, for us is very, very good. Perfect. Thank you very much and congratulations to Thank you, you and to much. Alex and the team. No problem. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Bye. Potentially the happiest man in the paddock right now? The happiest <laughs> team manager, that's for sure. I mean, one and three on the podium today. I'm happy. Of course, I'm happy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, great job from the guys, great job from the riders. We wanted to win a race, we did it. And uh, then... We found out ourselves uh, leading the championship. I don't know. Let's keep going. Uh, I don't know what to say. I don't want to say too much. Did you expect to be in this position at the beginning of this race weekend? This morning, Alex, uh, Alex Rins was uh, quite strong. <clears throat> he was very confident, but we were starting from 10 position. Yeah. The Yama were very strong. We were not sure whether we can keep the pace of Yama or not. So there's many, many question marks. Jan said on the Parc Ferme that he was struggling towards the, the end of the last few laps with the front of the bike. Do you know what happened? Yeah, yeah I think probably today Alex, Alex Markets, uh, he, he picked up the front medium. We, we, we use soft front yep. and probably the medium would have been maybe a better choice. But I don't know. We have to analyze the data. We have to make a meeting with the rider. Best of luck for next week and go and celebrate with the team and congratulations again. Thank you. Bye, Ciao. Gabriel. Oh my god. That is a very happy Suzuki team, Suzuki Pitbox on both sides. Uh, at the end of this Aragon Grand Prix. Let us know in the comments below what your favorite part of the vlog was and what you would like to see next. And don't forget to subscribe to the Rebel Motorsport YouTube channel so you don't miss the next episode of Inside Fast. See you next time.